So what's up, guys? Got a mega review going down here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um. So I've had some requests of you know people wanting to see my gear, do a gear rundown. Uh, you know what kind of guitars I've got, how many guitars I've got. Um. Quit, man. Um. Like, what I'm running my guitars through. Uh, there's some stuff that I could tell you. There's some stuff that I can't tell you about. Um, one thing that I can tell you is I'm going to show you all my guitars and stuff. And I'll show you my, like, uh, my amp rig. Uh, Mason Overfield, you were asking for this. Uh, then there were some f a few other people um, off the channel asking for it. You know, they want to see it. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of people that ain't got, uh, YouTube accounts, and there's a lot of people that ain't got, you know, none of that stuff going on, so, uh, but that's cool, you know, you know, Mason, you wanted to see my glasses, uh, you wanted to see what kind of glasses I've got going on here, they're, uh, Super Specs 5000, and uh, I'll be giving you kind of a rundown of what that looks like here in a little bit, um, you know, my house shoes, what kind of house shoes I'm wearing, what kind of man bag I carry around. Uh, but yeah, I guess let's get started. Let's get over here to the rigs and the junk pile over here. Cesspool of crap that I've got going on with my amp. Uh, my amp run rig rundown is kind of crazy. And there's a long story behind the amp. There's a story behind all of my stuff. Um, the amp in particular, I've had it since middle school. Uh, me and one of my buddies, uh, Zach Sutton, we, uh, we used to jam together back in the day <clears throat> and, uh, we, we used to do talent shows and stuff like that. And mom and dad, you know, I had a crappy custom, uh, if you don't, if you don't remember, not custom made, but like the custom brand with a K, uh, amplifier 112 that was just absolutely fried and uh, man it was craptastic it went out on me and ended up uh, kind of going all out mom she uh, mom ended up going all out and getting uh the amp for me and everything was like, you know, you just pick your amp out and, you know, uh, whatever it is, just get it. And that's, you know, that's, you do you. Uh, so I ended up going to a place in Paducah called Unga Bunga and, uh, seeing this line six and jamming on it a little bit. And, uh, you know, that was, man, those are the good old days. Uh, she totally supported me. Mom and dad always supported me and my music and uh, all that stuff. Um, but they got this Line 6 brand spanking new uh, back in middle school, which would have been like 2000 and I want to say... I want to say back in middle school, that would have been like 2005, and uh, pff, man, whenever I, I started jamming on this thing, I was just like, I was all over the place with the guitars and stuff anyways, and uh, man, it's it gets carried me a long way, uh, I had it all throughout high school, I sold it to a buddy of mine, uh, Oh freaking uh Sinister Centra there. Uh and then he I I bought a Randall. I've had numerous amps. And I, of course I had to have a Randall being a Dimebag fan. And I got an RH one hundred and this uh 212 115 cabinet from uh, a buddy of mine, Michael Bratcher. You've heard me mention Mr. Bratcher on previous videos and 
he hooked me up with that amp half stack and it was super clean at first and then of course i did my tasmanian devil finish on it and uh destroyed it ran it down to the ground this particular amp like zach sutton said this particular amp right here has been dropped out of the back of a pickup truck while it was going down a road on a rainy day a swamp swamp butt rainy and it was awful and it's been rained on like two or three times besides dropped out of the back of a truck and it's still this is what i use every 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 song i play on youtube everything i've done so far with the guitar on youtube playing through this is what i play through right here and i mean this is my old standby this is what's got my sound and uh not only that runs my sound, but I've got some other stuff that runs my sound that's kind of kind of top secret, hidden in the back, hidden in the back there. So, you know, Elvis has a lot to do with it. Oh, uh, freaking Elvis here. Kung Fu Elvis. Kung Fu Action Elvis. Anyways. So, uh, the spam can, you know, it really resonates the, uh, delay and the echo plex inside of the amp that gives it that, that echoey sound that you hear. Uh, other than that, um, my guitar stuff, my guitar stuff is like never ending, uh, projects and whatnot is, is insane. It's never ending. Uh, the guitar projects that I've got going on is just stupid. That uh, little guy right there is my my little boys. I'm gonna turn him turn him into a jammer. Hopefully, I was hoping to get him into drums, but <clears throat> got him a guitar first, so we'll see where it goes. You know, he'll do whatever he wants to do. Um, got a project right there that I've got to finish. Uh, reverse Ibanez headstock with shark fin inlays this is a real oddball. It's a, it's just an oddball neck anyways. It was recreated for a, for a one guitar project and then ended up going into this guitar project, which is, uh, kind of a dime bag copy of a three, three, three Washburn. Um, right there it is, uh, has a custom paint job done by, uh, Michael Bratcher. And uh, it's super freaking sweet. Got old Pinky here. Y'all seen? Y'all seen the pink strap in the uh, Super Bowl party video? And uh, this thing bought it at a pawn shop for about forty or fifty bucks. I think it was like forty-five dollars, something like that. And uh, I had this roasting in the. We, me and my wife, we've moved around so much. I had this thing roasting and toasting in the window at my mom's old shop. And it baked it pretty much over time, which is what I wanted. And then this guitar was black. It, you know, originally it was black. And then I went over it with uh, paint. Some of the spots I had some cl slick clear. And I left, it, I left it like that so I could get this weird, crazy looking patina. And uh, I wanted to look old. So that's what I that's what I went for and that's what I got. Love it. Love the way it turned out. And uh it's just an old squire, man. That's what I I love jamming old cheap crap. I like jamming new stuff and expensive stuff. Uh recently just got those two bad boys right there and right there. And they're those are my go to everything guitars now. Uh, I wish I had never sold my old Ibanez RG, uh, and I wish I had never sold my Ibanez Jim going back in the day and looking, I mean, it, those guitars are just flawless. And I mean, you can't get, you can't beat an Ibanez in my opinion. I mean, Ibanez and Dean, Squires, Fenders, they're, they're, I mean, anything's, anything's awesome, but, uh, I just, you know, you just find your, you find your niche. And you end up going for something else totally different than what you expect to go for. I always thought I wanted a B-body, but here I am with all strap bodies. Well, minus 
that guy back there and, and this. But, uh, of course, you guys know I did this video. This was another $50 strat. Pawn shop find. Uh, no, no, wait a minute. This was not a fine. This is not a pawn shop find. That was my EVH was a pawn shop find. This sucker right here is that is a Elkton. This is the Elkton strat. I picked this up from a dude from Facebook Marketplace. And, uh, <laughs> that is a crazy story. That is a, it was a long trip and we were out in the middle of wrong turnville. This is crazy out there, but anyways, there's that strat. I'm actually going to do something different with it here pretty soon. I like the red. I love the red, but I might just, uh, and I name it Peggy Sue. I'll tell you why I named this guitar Peggy Sue. Okay, so when I first got this guitar, you know, I had had a little bit of part and sort of cleaning on a little bit because it was nasty as crap. And I noticed, I was like, wait a minute, one of my tuning keys are gone. And I, I found this sucker on the floor, and I thought it done broke. And little and little did I know that this thing just kind of. Squire just kind of slid these suckers on here. And I mean, it's like that all the way up the sucker. I mean, <laughs> these will all come off. <laughs> so I named, I named her Peggy Sue because it's all pegged out whenever you can just rip off the tuning keys and it's over. So, you know, ain't nobody going to be tuning or untuning your guitar all customized, super fancy, Gucci. Gucci guitar here. So, moving on, I've got this guy right here. Okay. He is a, I got Liam, I got my son here helping me out here. So, this cat right here, a buddy of mine is probably watching, knows exactly what this is. Uh, a couple of buddies <laughs> probably know what this is. So, you would think this guitar is all original, but it's definitely not. So, I found the Floyd at a crappy half and half store, like a $5 and below store, where you dig through stuff, and you catch good deals, and, which was the Floyd Rose, what I found there, uh tremolo system got it for 25 cents i'd bag this sucker right here for 25 cents pickup came out of a iron bird bc rich and the neck came out of a bc rich iron bird that was my buddies uh kaylin oldham back in back, way back in the day and then this body right here, this BC Rich Warlock body, came from a buddy of mine, as well as that spike strap back there that y'all are probably curious about. Uh, he gave me this body and uh, that guitar strap back there for helping him move once, and uh, which is a kind of a project of mine right there. I'm gonna, I'm actually probably gonna make a video. I'm gonna be padding the backside of it to make it a little bit more comfortable. Uh, but yeah, I mean that was. The Iron Bird, man, I busted it in half with a freaking axe. I wish I could have had that on video. That was a sad day, especially for Oldham. He didn't like it. Sorry about that, Kalen. I hope you can forgive me. Uh, uh, man, that stinks. <laughs> All right, so then we get some more emotional stuff with my mom. See, my mom passed away couple of years ago and it's it's hit, it hit me really really hard with everything uh her and her and my dad have been awesome parents uh helping me helping raise me and really you know support me and everything that i do uh got me a sombrero here y'all seen that in the you all totally seen this guy in the uh Super Bowl party, and I got it on top of this guitar here because it's classical style guitar, so it's totally, 
totally goes along with the theme. So they picked up this guitar and, uh, up north, uh, upstate New York, where my brother went to school at. It is a, uh, G60 Yamaha. And it's the legit old school. It's like, uh, I think this was built, like, whenever I looked up the numbers, it was built back in, like, 68. And they bought it from, a, like, a like a yard sale or something. Uh-oh. And uh, made in Japan. And I'm not I'm not against anything made in Japan or China. I'll play it all. My, my Ibanez's are made in Indonesia. But, uh, they... So they bought they bought this thing for like near to near to nothing and it had a crack in the neck. I fixed it once and I let my son get a hold of it and play with it. And then it got cracked again because he's rough on stuff. So all I got all I want to do, I'm gonna I could probably gonna make a video on how to uh fix this as well, because I'm gonna fix it really good this time, no doubt. Uh, should give you guys a little demonstration on how I'm gonna fix that guy right there, and uh, but yeah, this thing it play it plays awesome. It sounds great. It's got the Willie Nelson vibe to it for sure. It sounds and plays great. Uh, it's probably got the original strings on it. I don't even know, but uh, my mom and dad they always picked up a lot of gear for me, and uh, I mean it was. Well, it was a really awesome thing to have them as parents hooking me up with stuff like the amp and the guitar. I mean, they've got they've gotten me guitars and all kinds of stuff over the years, and a lot of it, a lot of it, I had to work for, and a lot of it was gifts. And uh, this one right here, as well as the you know the cat gut string behind it, uh, were gifts. And this was a Christmas gift. I think my sixth grade year of middle school. Uh, That'd have been like 2003 or so. Uh, 12 string guitar, 12 string Yamaha. I love Yamaha acoustic guitars. Love these guys. Uh, it's a uh, FG41112. It's missing the bridge. This has been some. This has been through some rough stuff right here. This guy right here has been through a lot of rough times. And. Uh, I hate that because, you know, it was such a, it's such a dear, especially now it's such a dear, uh, piece to have next to me, uh, reminding me of my mom and dad and what all they've done for me over the years. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's going to be a project too. That's a project. The one behind it's a project. That's a project. That's a project. The one behind it, I think is going to be now a project because I want it to look kind of old school, kind of like the pink guy. So... Then I got the strap project. Now I got to get all these projects done and show you guys uh, all the different videos of me getting them done. But uh, this one needs a new nut and a new bridge. This one needs a new nut and a new bridge to be able to play right again. Uh, new strings, all that crap. Uh, my dad, <laughs> he uh, he helped me out. He rigged me up here, made me a little bit of a bridge right here. So my so my little E and my little ones didn't uh didn't buzz out obviously that thing's not in tune then there's my son's maestro v i catch myself playing it a lot uh jamming a lot he loves jamming with me a lot of times uh then i got this old guy i got this from a buddy of mine josh cook uh if you're watching appreciate it man uh so, this one right here, it's kind of a late tribute to a buddy of mine. I gotta fix a sticker on here. I had a sticker on here that was uh, Unga Bunga, one of my favorite music stores. It's closed now. It was uh, in Paducah, Kentucky. <sighs> this bass guitar was supposed to be kind of like a tribute to my buddy uh, Michael Shoulders, Mikey Shoulders. Uh... He's a huge white. Me and him were huge white zombie fans, huge Pantera fans. Me and him 
jammed constantly together. Me and him were big jam buddies. Uh, we were going to have a band together, had a big plans. And uh, literally last August, he was in a terrible car accident and passed away. And uh, it was a really emotional ride, emotional roller coaster uh, to deal with and to ride through. Uh, it's, it's, it's really important. It's like a... It's really important to make best friends in life, uh, and it's really important to you know let them know what you, what you think and how you feel. Because sometimes, whew, sometimes you just uh, you let things go too too far, too long. Um, but yeah, he would have he would have loved this thing. Uh, a lot of beer stuff. Got the uh, pot leaf thing on there. Got the Batman. Got the smiley faces. Got the oil stuff. I'm gonna have some car stuff on there because me and him, we love cars and energy drinks and brewskis and movies and everything else. So that's what this is all about. And uh, I still play it from time to time, thinking about him. But uh, but moving on, uh, got a right here is the only crybaby I use. It's the CFH Dom crybaby from hell. I snagged this sucker off Facebook Marketplace. I've had one before, and it came from a friend, uh, Terry Young, from uh, high school. Bought it back in the day, and then I sold it. Seen this on Facebook Marketplace, had to have it back. And, I mean, this thing was like brand spanking new in the box. So I got, I got hit up and lucky on that. I was either going to get this or a 535Q, because that's basically all this is with the with a booster on it, but that thing is gnarly as crap. That's what I use for wah and, and some of my sound. Up here, we have uh, the RG8. I've already done a little bit of custom stuff to it. I dyed the, I dyed the uh, fret inlays red. I got me a, a fret wrap. I'm actually going to make a fret wrap in one of my videos soon so hopefully you guys stay tuned and watch that um but yeah that's that's that one and i got the evil twin back here hiding i've done the same same ordeal to it you know i've kind of put my little custom deal on there i've got some uh red inlay knobs pearl red with the black metal on the outside coming in and uh that's gonna be kind of like my little deal there uh on the on those guitars and those evil twins there got a little bit of a bc rich action figure memorabilia old bratcher gave me about a long time ago my wife scored this for me offline uh forever ago well actually no it was his last christmas i think uh, this is totally last Christmas she got me this signed by the the whole band Pantera got this and this pick right here there's a long story behind that pick but that is an actual dime bag pick had a buddy not not this one but that one my buddy who uh, I was trying to get a wolf dog from a while back, he uh, he had got me, you know, wanting that dog, and I started hanging out with him and trying to get that dog off of him, and he ended up uh, him and this one dude, uh, and he was like, "Man, you're a big T Pantera fan. You're a big, you know, Dimebag fan, you know, and all this stuff." And I was like, "Yeah, man," and he showed me some pictures of him and Dimebag hanging out way back in the day, and I mean, I. It, there's no way it was photoshopped because this sucker right here. I mean, him, him and her, him and that dude had their arms crossed together, and it was on the tour with a white zombie. And if you look at Dimebag's actual guitar picks, they've got that those lines through them. And I mean, I was freaking out. It showed a picture of him giving them the pick and stuff, and I was like, "No way!" And he's like, "Dude, I want you to have this pick." He said, "I just think it's amazing that you you jam all that." Because back in the day, I had the the Randall RH100 half stack. I had the CFH guitar. I've had, oh my God, I've 
there's no telling how many guitars I've had. So, uh, that's just the crazy part of that. That sucker came from actual Woodstock up north, up upstate New York, uh, and came from Woodstock. It's the old deal. Mom and Dad got me that, too, back in the day. There's where I signed up for the King of the Blues and sorely lost to that back, uh, 2011. That, that was a suck fest. That was terrible. And this is where it all started. Uh, besides the little mushroom sticker. Whoop. This is where it all started, guys. This guitar right here started it all with me. I was a kid, and I'd sit at my grandmother's house. It had three guitar strings on it. And whenever I was a kid, I would sit with this thing in my lap and jam out on it. And I loved it so much. I was It was amazing. I still love it. And uh, my uh, grandfather... He's not my legit grandfather, but it was my grandmother's boyfriend at the time. He treated me like a grandson. He treated me like a son. He was he was amazing to me. And uh, he got me this guitar. Or he, he didn't get me this guitar. He, he had this guitar from forever ago and had, you know, left it there at Grandmama's house. And I just sat there and picked it up and played it. I'd always, I'd always get in the closet, kind of like my son does, you know, and get in there and tear through and, and find it, hook it up. It had the original amp that came with it. Sears and Roebuck is what this is. It is a Sears and Roebuck, uh, I believe silver tone guitar. And it is bad. It is a bad mama jamma. My buddy, Michael Bratcher, he had a old harmony. He took some parts off of it. Didn't have the, uh, pick guard holder and didn't have the spring down here. But uh, he took some parts off of it and put it on there, and we souped it up a little bit. And uh, he did a little bit of a setup back in the day, and it plays good now. But uh, but yeah, that that brings back really old memories, and that's where it all started. That's where it all began. And mom and dad, we started slowly getting better and better, and more and more stuff. And then of course I bought the uh, back in the day. Mom and dad got me my first guitar was my first actual electric guitar was. The Washburn lawsuit model of a Ibanez RG, and uh, that was a sweet guitar. That was a lot of fun. But yeah, so there's my rig rundown. That's all I got going on, pretty much for right now. Except for you know, there's some other. I'm wanting to do a Steve Gray Vaughn copy. I got one super special that I'm wanting to do uh, for you guys. Uh, all I can say is ZZ Top's involved, so you just kind of sit there and wrap your minds around that a little bit. But uh, but yeah, so hopefully you all like the video. Hope you all like the rig rundown. Hope you all like my hands showing you everything. And uh hope you enjoyed Elvis. Hope you enjoyed everything that you've seen. Uh, I know this is a long video, but I mean I couldn't show you all my gear without it being extra long. Cause I had, there's a story behind everything. And I mean, I wished I had every single story recorded. That would just be amazing. I wished I had, I wish I could go back and catch all that time on video and wrapped up into one solid movie. It'd be great. Cause, uh, a lot of those people are missing in my life now and I'm missing them. Uh, and it sucks. Uh, so, anyways, uh, hope y'all enjoyed and stay tuned and uh, keep watching because there's going to be some other crazy stuff. There's always going to be something going on. Uh, just, uh, oh, I almost forgot. I almost forgot about one guitar. There's another guitar that I almost forgot about. I can't believe it. Uh, so over here, over here, I've got a guitar that was my grandmother's, and she's had it since she was a girl, a little girl. And uh, my grandmother passed back in high school. Um, I've got, I've got to show you guys this guitar. So there it is. This is the uh, the one you see in the background all the time. It has no 
indication on the inside or anywhere on it of what it is. Uh, she said that I think her uncle or her grandpa might have gave it to her when she was a little girl. And she was a little girl back in like the 1920s. So this sucker is old, old, old. The patina on the headstock is all crumbly. It's set in the attic forever. It's kind of busted up a little bit. Uh, right here on the side. That's historical amazement right there. This guy, I mean, it's obviously been played on hardcore. I would love to get this thing fixed up to where it would play again. It would it would blow my grandmother's mind looking down on me and seeing me playing that, that guitar. This actual guitar would be insane. So uh, hopefully I can do that one day. But I, I'm sorry I almost forgot about that one, but there's that guitar. And it is not a project. It is just a museum piece more or less uh can't believe i've got it can't believe you know there was a long line that i didn't know about for a long time that uh a family that actually played a lot of music on uh, both sides of my family so that kind of got double passed down to me but uh anyways hope you guys enjoyed the video hope you guys like everything you watched and uh Stay tuned and subscribe, like at the bottom. There's always something awesome going on on this channel. Always something different, something new. I know there ain't many videos, but there'll be plenty of videos for you guys to watch later on. So just stay tuned and uh, have a good life and stay positive and be happy. And we'll see you next time. And I almost forgot one more guitar that I had to add in there. The EBH eruption copy that I've got going on here still not done I know you guys are probably disappointed but I can't help it got a lot of stuff going on right now so <clears throat> but uh yep that should be about it on the guitars can't believe I almost forgot about that one. Oh yeah I'm wearing these Uggs they were a gift to me for my wife for Christmas this last year they're awesome Look at them. I've already worn them out bad. But these are these are the legit Uggs. Ugg mugs. And they feel like I just put a sheep on my foot. A lamb is on my foot. It's just amazing. I love them. So these are the spec super spec 5000s that I was talking about for Mason. So Mason, what I've got here is a uh, Ray-Ban uh, fixed for uh, fat-headed guys. Um, if you go to uh, a certain place for your glasses, you can get them. They are a uh, they have a Crizal lens that are supposed to be unscratchable, but that's bullcrap because they are totally scratched up a little bit with all the uh, crazy ninja moves I've gotten on my other videos. But, uh, but yeah, these are Ray-Ban Super Specs 5000s, and they're the bomb diggity. They're perfect for my big old fat head. I got a big old wide head. I mean, melon, pumpkin head. So, uh, yep, there's the glasses.